Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, we are excited to welcome everyone today to the virtual event, Bridging the Gap Steward Industry 4.0, Focus on Digital Manufacturing. We are Eleonora Rella and Aurora Cicillini, investment promotion experts at Unido ITP Italy, and we will have the pleasure to moderate this session. This event in particular will give us all the opportunity to dive into cutting edge models and innovations in digital, in digital manufacturing, thus presenting valuable perspectives provided by innovators from different backgrounds and from all over the world. The framework of today's event is the project Innovation Bridge, Teste Dubai 2020, which is funded by the uh, Fiuli Venezia Giulia region and implemented by Unido ITP Italy, which has the objective to enable the creation of an ecosystem of innovators and to contribute to the activities that will lead up to Expo Dubai 2021. I am therefore pleased to introduce the panelists that we will have with us today. Diana Battaglia, head of Unido ITP Italy, Sandra Sudlini, Director of International Relations and European Projects for the Fiuli Venezia Giulia region. Stefano Salvador, Head of Enterprises and Incubation Office at Area Science Park. Alessio Lorusso, CEO at Robose. Roberto Gallo, Director at Fab Lab Zoe in Ecuador. Leonard Mabele, Manager of the IoT Research Lab at iLab Africa in Kenya. Raymond Tavares, Industrial Development Officer at UNIDO, and Professor Wu Yugang, Director of the Shanghai International Intelligent Manufacturing Promotion Center. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we are excited also about the second and interactive part of the event, in which we will give space uh, to the speakers and also to the audience to engage with each other and share insights and curiosity on digital manufacturing, also helped by some interactive digital tools. Uh, one of those tools will be a Q&A session. So we would like to encourage you right from the start of the event to write your questions and comments in the Q&A chat that you, will be, that you will find in the bottom area of your uh, Zoom window. We would also like to mention that a recording of today's event will be available starting from tomorrow on our website, unido.it, uh, together with all the presentations and other resources used today. And now, in order to start the session, we are glad to leave the floor to Ms. Diana Battaglia, Head of Unido ITPO Italy, for her welcome remarks. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you, Eleonora. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm delighted to welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's event, Bridging the Gaps Toward the um, Industry 4.0 focus on digital manufacturing. It is a pleasure for Unido TPO Italy to host a panel with such a remarkable and varied pool of speakers representing research, uh, centers, startups, uh, fab labs, and international organizations from different regions of the world. Today's uh, discussion will revolve around the impact of the fourth industrial revolution, which is uh, quickly gaining momentum in the discourse around uh, uh, industrialization. We are indeed witnessing the many different ways in uh, which digital technologies are profoundly transforming production and shaping the future of manufacturing. Industry 4.0 is about uh, uh, digital innovation uh, in products, processes and business models both for large private and public entities, as well as for small and medium enterprises alike. It represents a source of opportunities that we simply cannot afford to miss. Uh, in line with the focus of the project, uh, Innovation Bridge uh, uh, Trieste Dubai 2020, that represented the framework of today's event, we look forward to providing a platform for experts to share their perspectives on the subject of innovative uh, supply chain. Uh, most importantly, uh, our aim is to offer them the opportunity to exchange views in a digital manufacturers and innovation from other regions of the world. Indeed, innovation, knowledge sharing and exchange, as well as development and strategic partnerships are pivotal to 
uh, fully tap into the disruptive potential of industry uh, 4.0 uh, technologies. In line with the UNIDO's mandate to bring about inclusive and sustainable industrial development as a custodian agency for SDGs 9 of the United Nations 2030 agenda, UNIDO TPO Italy stri um, strive to uh, create meaningful connections between international actors from different backgrounds and enable to um, the, the, the generation to, uh, uh, of opportunity for prosperity in emerging markets and developing countries. Therefore, we hope that this virtual event will represent a valuable opportunity to lay the foundations to collaborate, network and share ideas in, uh, in this direction. As ITPO Italy, we are very glad to announce the, that the today's session is only the first of a long series of events that will lead up um, Expo Dubai 2021 and that will address various aspects of its main theme, and namely connecting minds, creating the future. Uh, so in conclusion, um, I especially I'd like to especially thank to all panelists uh, that uh, are here, here with us, uh, the team of uh, UNIDO ITPO Italy for organizing this event and all participants today. Uh, a warm, warm welcome to, to everyone again, and I wish uh, you all very fruitful discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Director, for opening the, the virtual event with your intervention. So uh, the next intervention will be from uh, Sandra Sodini, uh, who is the Director of International Relations and European Projects at the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. Um, and we would like to present you a recorded message for her for dedicated to this event. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sandra Sudini, the head of the Department of International Relations and European Programming of the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. So on behalf of Friuli Venezia Giulia, welcome to this important event. And sorry, sorry for not being with you today, but unfortunately, this uh, period in the year is really very busy, and this is the last week, let's say, that we are operative. But uh, anyhow, I would like to thank, uh, really thank uh, UNIDO ITP for uh, IPO, for the organization of the event. And uh, let me express also my regards to Aria Science Park that cooperated. Uh, for uh, the um, organization of uh, the today meeting. Um, let me express uh, also uh, my gratitude uh, for all the people that uh, in these years uh, um, supported these projects and this cooperation between UNIDO, ITPO, and Friuli Venezia Giulia Region. It's a long last uh, uh, and fruitful experience uh, that uh, joined us uh, in uh, many fruitful uh, uh, projects. Uh, and uh, in specific, uh, today we are here in order to open uh, this uh, important event related to bridging the gaps uh, toward Industry 4.0 and uh, focusing on digital manufacturing. This is a very important uh, focus. Digital transformation uh, is uh, the key word uh, for the next years. Uh, and uh, we know already in these days uh, how is important and how much we switched uh, to digital. Any other comments in this moment uh, is, uh, cannot be um, uh, so important uh, as uh, saying that uh, without uh, digital uh, transformation, our mutual job in this uh, diff difficult year won't be possible. So in the future, digital transformation also for companies, for innovation, for uh, um, researchers will be really
really fundamental and we had to start uh, really reasoning how this opportunity uh, will uh, have to be um, at the most uh, um, investigated for the future to uh, start again and to grow again with our uh, commune job. Um, I have to say that uh, one of the most important uh, um, activity uh, that uh, is included in, uh, in our project is uh, the selection of a number of innovations to be promoted within the international business and economic communities in order to find a potential partner. We will devote a special priority to projects focusing on providing digital industry jobs for young people. Young people is one of the keywords that I would like to stress for the opening speech of this event. Uh, young people that are suffering this uh, period may be um, more than, uh, than us or uh, than uh, uh, in respect of my generation. And uh, the restarting has to be focused on uh, them and uh, their needs. Absolutely, this is very, very important. Um, so uh, let me express uh, in uh, concluding this uh, short, uh, this short introduction, um, my best wishes for uh, uh, the free working chair session that uh, uh, will start. And uh, I would like also to express in this uh, very difficult time, uh, uh, my wish that in 2021 in Dubai, we will have the possibility to meet everybody in person, so also if uh, uh, we had the important event uh, as of here in Trieste uh, that was uh, perfectly, absolutely perfectly organized uh, on, uh, as a digital event, but uh, we need uh, human networks and uh, human relations. So my best wishes for um, meeting all of you in 2021 in Dubai at the end of this important project. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, we will have uh, this uh, opportunity as this uh, pandemic period uh, will be over. So thanks a lot again and uh, have a fruitful uh, afternoon of uh, uh, cooperation and thanks uh, a lot uh, again to Unido ITPO. Thank you. Perfect. We we thank very much uh, once again, Miss Sudini, for this recording message and for her inspiring and hopeful words as well. And um, so past this stage, we have done the introductory remarks and we are now excited to kickstart the main session of the event and to hear from digital manufacturing experts participating from all over the world. Um, so to start, I wish to leave the floor to Stefano Salvador, head of Enterprises and Incubation Office at Area Science Park in the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. Uh, for a focus on the initiatives undertaken by Area Science Park to digitalize SMEs and uh, local, regional, and also national level. Uh, Stefano, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Aurora. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. I will be very quick because I know the time is short for each uh, presentation. I, I will try and give you a brief outline of what Area Science Park has been doing in the last couple of years regarding the thematic of supporting companies, especially SMEs in, let's say, utilizing the, the good aspects of uh, digitalization. I will try and share my screen. And I will ask Aurora if everything is yeah. fine. Perfect. Okay. You so, can very briefly, who is Area Science Park? Uh, 
just to to let uh, let you know what we are talking about we are a national research organization directly controlled by the italian ministry for university and research we were established in 1978 so more than 40 years ago as the managing authority of the first science and technology park in italy from then we have grown with a broader scope so we are still managing the two campuses in uh, trieste in padriciano and basovizza but we have also opened uh, many uh, different uh, areas of action with the overall mission of helping develop the economic system through innovation and technological research. The park is, is well established. Uh, it has around 70 companies now. We, as a Ara Science Park, so the managing body, we are around 170 people now. So we are quite big for uh, just a uh, let's say, uh, a, a small research uh, entity. And we are moving mm, towards, uh, let's say, a wider role as an innovation agency. So uh, with a focus also on other territories, not only the, the Friuli Venezia region, which is obviously our first target, but we are also having a lot of cooperation on a national and international level. Especially in the last two years, we have been uh, we have activated uh, many different projects within the framework of what we call Sistema Argo, which is let's say an umbrella platform for four different pillars of activity, which uh, are let's say our strategic developing development objectives at the moment, which are helping innovative industrial settlements starting from the port of Trieste, but moving also to other uh, interesting uh, industrial areas, helping the creation of new business, so startups and spin-offs with a high technological uh, impact, providing and managing uh, technology platforms and open labs. We have seen that there's a lot of uh, scientific infrastructure which could be very useful also for companies and so we are trying to provide access open access to this big international level scientific uh, assets and instruments also for companies and then we are also uh, trying to push process innovation through digitalization this is this last area is what i will talk about a bit more. We started with the regional, with a regional focus uh, in 2018, and we tried to develop a common platform for the digi digital transformation support initiatives that we, we could see on the territory and that we wanted to, to start anew. So we have worked quite hard to create a common ecosystem of all the main actors that were active in the digitalization support in our region and we have so created what is now uh, officially recognized as a european regional level digital innovation hub comprising the main uh, players in this field in the region we have three technology parks all of the technology parks in the region the universities the competence center, which is uh, uh, next to us, so the uh, SMACT competence center, which is uh, the competence center for the whole northeast of Italy. We have industrial clusters, industries. We have directly involved also private partners because we wanted to have the industrial players directly into the partnership. Educational institutes uh, and uh, uh, obviously we have, we also have a direct link with the regional government. And what did we set up? So we started with the idea of uh, developing four nodes for different locations within the region. One is in Trieste, obviously, is where I'm talking from now. One is in Udine, one is in uh, Amaro, in Tolmezzo, which is in the northern part of the region, and one is in uh, Pordenone. We wanted to 
have physical location which could be uh, near to the companies, especially SMEs. We wanted to have uh, easy access to these facilities. So we, uh, we didn't concentrate everything in just one location. And we wanted to have the nodes specialized on a specific layer of the so-called enabling technologies. So we wanted that each node could become specialized in one specific technology, but they could work all together with a common activity plan. So we set up uh, uh, one node, which is uh, focusing on advanced manufacturing solution. In our, from our point of view, that means that in that location, we are specializing the technologies which are really related to the, let's say the production line. So the digital aspects of what is a concrete production uh, layer. So the, the, the manufacturing, the, the, the factory level. From there, we move to the internet of things, specialized node, which tries to catch the layer that transfers the data from the, the production line or from the field towards the cloud with a different set of, with a, a very uh, varied set of technologies. From there, we have the node which is specializing on data analytics and artificial intelligence with the idea that once we have the data into the cloud or uh, easily accessible, we need to uh, be able to analyze, to use that data, to use the specific information that we can extract from the data. And finally, we close the, let's say, the, the circle of the data flow with the node specialized in simulation and optimization. So basically what we can do with the digital data also before uh, coming back physically on uh, some of the production aspects. This was the, the starting point. So we developed this structure. From this year onwards, we are aiming to move forward from the, techno the enabling technologies level to the application areas. So we have decided to widen our attention. We started from manufacturing, we added quite soon the construction sector to our uh, main interest. And we are from now on moving also towards the smart health sector and what we call smart mountains. Uh, in our region, we have uh, quite a, a big man mountainous areas. And we have identified that, uh, that area as particularly interesting to test to try some of the digital technologies. What do the node do in concrete? What are the services? What, what do we provide to companies? Basically, we provide what are the recognized uh, four levels of services, which also the European Commission recognizes as a typical for digital innovation app, which are test before invest services. What does this mean? Basically that we provide Testing, tech, the testing infrastructures, technologies. We have demo labs, living labs, where the companies can come, try uh, some of the technologies that they are interested in, talk with experts, and basically uh, evaluate what technology would really fit their own uh, strategic aims before committing with, uh, with the investments. We provide skill and training with technical workshops, uh, with awareness events, because we have recognized that uh, it is very important also to broaden the knowledge about these technologies. There's a lot of talk on the web and in events on Industry 4.0, on uh, IoT, or some of these names, uh, but the companies need to, to know a bit more before they really can commit to change their way of uh, doing business with these technologies. We help companies also to find possible investment support. We, we could be, we could come with uh, EU grants. We are now starting the, finally, the, the new European, uh, the budget has been, uh, 
accepted. So that from now on, there will be also EU grants that will open for companies and for research centers. So this is obviously an area of interest, given also the COVID situation, which has certainly not helped the company to have a lot of money to, to, to spend on uh, new investments. And finally, we work quite hard to uh, remain connected with other players. So the innovation ecosystem and networking is, in our opinion, is interesting both for us as a structure, so for our digital innovation apps, as well as for the companies. This is just a quick overview. I will be obviously for any question there will be time later on. I will not go into details about the, the figures that I show here. We will, I think the presenters will give the possibility to download the slides of the speakers afterwards. So I will just point a couple of activity indicators to show what we have done in this couple of years. So basically we started with a, a digital assessment campaign. We wanted to know better what, how, the money, how digital the manufacturing companies are. So we made up to now 160, more or less about 160 digital assessments. So our experts went to interview manufacturing companies and we used, let's say, a national standard. So we chose a model of assessment which is recognized by the National Industry Association in order to be able also to have a benchmark with other territories. Of this, uh, uh, last year, we also highlighted, we selected which were the, the best performing, let's say, the, the more advanced companies. We gave them um, let's say a uh, prize, we call them the manuf FVG manufacturing lighthouses because we think that they can provide an example for other companies on how the digitalization could really help business and that we would like that companies can talk with each other and exchange uh, first-hand experience on this. So these 11 companies that we have highlighted, we also supported them with a, a grant with for a 12 months for a new young uh, researcher that could work in the company, helping them de further develop their digital projects. On the other side, we also um, found a bit more than 30 companies which asked for our assistance in developing new digital transformation projects. And we are currently adding more projects that we, we support. We put uh, uh, quite a lot of investment uh, uh, on the technology. So we wanted to give the nodes uh, uh, real technology to show. So we invested around uh, six, 600,000 uh, euros up to now in just in technological infrastructure for to be uh, to be made uh, available to the companies and then uh, we have worked a lot obviously on also on the training part we developed uh, so we we yeah we did more than 40 workshops and trainings uh, and working also with the universities. We did four specific higher education training courses. And this is uh, an activity that we saw caught the interest of the companies. I will now try to give uh, you just three takeouts from our activity. So um, that could maybe also be of use for other examples and for other territories. We tried with this digital assessment campaign to answer the question, as I was saying, how digital are the manufacturing companies in our region? We wanted some data on that. So in the assessment campaign of 2019, we interviewed 90 companies trying to mix big companies, medium, small and micros. And uh, what we found out is that uh, uh, on a scale of six, so one to six, then the average is just a bit 
higher than free. Free for us was the threshold for, let's say, the first digitalization. So a company that is using digital tools, but not very advanced digital tools, not real 4.0 uh, technology. So few companies in our region are over this first digitalization level. The bigger companies are leading. They could put more investment in the previous year. So obviously they are more advanced, but there is a problem with the supply chain in, in the sense that even if a bigger company is very digitized, it needs its whole supply chain to be digitized because the, the data must flow through all the supply chain. And this is one of the, the aspects that we are trying to target now to help uh, and improve. On the other side of the, of the medal, we also wanted to know how the, the technology offer in our region is. So what are the ICT companies working on? The, the, the companies that are next to the manufacturing ones, so in our region. So we interviewed this year 190 ICT companies of all sizes in the region, and they uh, gave us uh, more than 400 technological solutions. So what they're offering, uh, what they are offering to, to the companies to analyze. We found that uh, more than 60% of these companies, they are actually working on 4.0 products or services, but uh, a lot of them, so more than 35%, 36% is, are still mainly dealing with traditional IT technologies. So not 4.0, which it could be an alert because like the bigger player, the big technological provider, providers are probably in the position that could overtake this traditional offering in quite a short time. And then we also try to see what are the, um, the target areas within the clients that these solutions are aimed at. And we found that, uh, okay, 24% of the solution we analyzed is aimed at operations. So the typical uh, operating layer for most of the production companies, but uh, there is very few of our regional companies that are um, offering solution targeting, for example, maintenance or quality assessment, quality management, production quality management, which are two of, for example, of the areas in which 4.0 technologies are actually more advanced and could change uh, very quickly. So what do we do now with, the, with this knowledge? We try to compare the two results. So let's say, how is the matching going on? How is the technological offer uh, matching the requests or the suggestions that we gave the manufacturing companies? And Obviously, which is good, uh, the, the first thing, we need the companies to move on in this digitization process. So they have to, to let's say, grow in that scale from one to six, because six for us is the use of really 4.0 intelligent tools. And we want so to help them at least to reach uh, a higher common ground and both the suggested technologies that we suggested to the manufacturing companies and the technological offer is actually still for the majority focused on this kind of traditional IT level. But there are some interesting uh, other information. For example, the ICT companies are working a lot on uh, augmented reality, mixed reality, this kind of uh, technological um, field which is something that the manufacturing companies are very far from. They are still, there, there is not so much space now for the implementation of these technologies in the manufacturing lines. So this is a bit of a mismatch. So probably 
the ICT companies could uh, try and uh, match the request from the manufacturing companies with some other technologies. On the other side, for example, the IoT, so the, the data transfer layer is basically in line between the two. So there are some common aspects where the matching is working, but we feel that uh, some actions and support from uh, intermediaries like us, for example, like our ecosystem or other players could probably help uh, to put these two images a bit more uh, alike. Basically, that was it. I hope that I stick to the time that uh, was given to me and I will be happy to answer any question if there are later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefano, for the very interesting intervention and for the interesting insights that you provided on the work that you're currently doing at Tario Science Park to fostering the digitalization of enterprises. And as you were mentioning, um, the presentations and the other resources that are being used today will be available soon on our website, unido.it, and will be available for everyone, together with the re uh, recording of this session. Now I'm delighted to leave the floor to Alessio Lorusso, CEO at Trobos, leading manufacturer of 3D printers for super materials to provide us with uh, an overview of the company's uh, supply chain 4.0 model and to describe the robot ecosystem. So please, Alessio, you have the floor. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Eleonora, for the kind introduction. My name is Alessio Lobuso. I'm the founder and CEO of Robos. And Robos, we are providing to hundreds of customers and partners in the world the possibility to produce the parts they need just in time and on demand through our 3D printing technology for super polymers and composite materials. So COVID-19 showed to all of us how obsolete is the current supply chain. It's simple, not sustainable anymore, produce, producing millions of parts in delocalized countries in the world and then ship parts all over the world because this creates more than 7% of global CO2 emissions, creating a cost for companies of 1.50 trillion in 2017 in parts stored in warehouses in the world, creating a cost of more than 300 billion for the companies. So you can understand that <clears throat> producing millions of parts, the mass production of parts is simple, not sustainable anymore. And COVID-19 show us how the supply chain needs to be think again to go to the next step. So 3D printing can be a real powerful tool to develop the new way to create a new sustainable way to produce parts and, and, and create parts just in time and on demand. But still 3D printing has some problems. So we still need to miss the gap. So the gap is that currently 3D printing is very inaccurate process because it was designed basically for prototyping. So wasn't designed to produce real end use parts. So the bad quality of materials due to the fact that 30 years ago, 3D printing and additive manufacturing in general was invented to create parts for designers and to create prototypes the, the materials used so far are very low performing materials. So they can provide just an aesthetic uh, feedback of, of the part and not real functional. And the printing process is not very stable and it's not very robust as a traditional manufacturing method like CNC machining or injection molding or other traditional methods. So robots worked very hard in the last five years to overcome all these limits, creating what is today the most precise and the most repeatable 3D printing technology in the world for the most performing super materials in the world. So thanks to this, we created what we call the beltless patent of robots. So we are capable to realize part with 10 micron resolution. 
So a typical resolution of traditional manufacturing methods. So now with the 3D printing, with the additive manufacturing, we have the same power to produce accurate products and create in a repeatable way. Done this, we concentrated our effort in creating the, in creating the robots material science team. So we work very hard to create the future generation of super materials, like we call. So polymers, plastics, but thanks that thanks of the mechanical, thermal, and physical properties of the plastics we designed together with our chemical partners, we are capable today to even replace metals in extreme applications. And we created the robust distributed manufacturing way. So create parts localized just in time and on demand through our manufacturing as a service global network in the world. So our 3D printers um, are professional series and production series. So today with our technology, we ensure customers to print, to produce more than 10,000 of parts per year of the single product. So we are talking about realizing customized production instead of mass production. The robust technology ecosystem is the one-stop solution to create real functional end use parts with great mechanical performances, with great thermal performances capable to replace metal in extreme applications like energy, aerospace, motorsport, automotive, electrical mobility. And then we will take a look. So the, everything we created can provide an enormous benefit to the customers in the world. Especially important thanks to the, the distributed manufacturing system we created. So the technology enables the scalability of the business model we created. So we can ensure to our customers that they can print the parts when they need producing the parts in our parts production centers in the world. So we helped a lot of companies like CNC machining companies, plastics companies, engineering companies in getting our printers and materials in their shop floors, joining our manufacturing as a service network. And then we create the point of touch between the customers who needs the parts and the producers of the parts equipped with our technology. So we enable our parts production center to meet our customers and create the parts they need just in time and on demand locally, avoiding shippings, avoiding numbers of parts to print and store in warehouses, nothing more. So the parts are digitally stored in the machines, in our 3D printers, and they are produced just in time and on demand. Now you can understand how this change the entire value chain and the entire supply chain. We don't ship parts anymore. We print the parts, we produce the parts few minutes before we need the parts. Avoiding shippings, reducing CO2 emissions and avoiding waste of material. So this is the new way to produce parts. And this creates a value because we are bringing the manufacturing back to Europe and back to the United States. So we bring back the value of designing and the value of producing parts. So robots today serve some of the major industry leaders in the world. At this point, we have more than 450 machines in 25 countries in the world, covering all continents in the world and creating the just-in-time and on-demand production for the first time through 3D printing technology. So some examples of applications done by some of our customers. For the oil and gas sectors, we are helping energy companies in replacing metal parts and printing the parts just in time and on demand, creating more than 70% lead time reduction and 50% cost saving. So we create the spare part when the spare part is needed. For the electrical mobility, we are helping companies to 
create the future generation of electrical mobility parts, thanks to the incredible thermal and electrical um, installation properties of our super polymers, we can create parts in super polymers instead of metals, realizing uh, uh, lighter parts, light vehicles, and reducing the emissions and increase the efficiency of electrical vehicles. In the aviation as well, we are creating parts for molds to create the future generation of composite parts for, for commercial aviation. And we are exploring incredible opportunities in the space sector. So we are collaborating with a plenty of space companies in the world, including the major top companies in the world, providing the future generation of material and parts to create lightweight structures for nanosatellites, microsatellites, and even rockets. If we have uh, a weighter rockets, it will be possible to reduce the emissions and, and create very strong parts at the same time. We are also in the manufacturing processes, so we are helping companies in replacing some obsolete production methods, realizing jigs and fixtures with our technology and replacing even metals. And of course, motorsport is one of the sectors we are, we, are, we are very active. We serve several F, F1 and MotoGP racing teams. They create last minute parts of the track in some, some cases. So Robos is realizing the new way to produce the parts. COVID-19 showed to all of us how urgent is the problem of the supply chain. The shortage of supply chain three, four months ago was, was massive for companies in Europe and in America. We had companies old for months waiting, waiting the parts they needed in their assembly lines, in their production lines. This is not possible anymore. This shouldn't happen anymore. So we need a new way to produce product, realize more efficiency, reducing the CO2 emissions and bringing the value back to America, to, to Europe, producing parts in the place the parts then are needed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessio, for your input on how 3D printing is transforming production models and also contributing to shaping the future of manufacturing. That was really interesting. And next, from Ecuador, we have uh, Roberto Gallo, director at Fab Lab Zoe, and he will tell us more um, about um, the role played by 3D printing and distributed manufacturing in the response of the country to the COVID-19 pandemic. So Roberto, please, you have the floor. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I will share my screen. Yeah, so we are part of um, the global Fab Lab network. We are SOI, so it means live in Greek. <laughs> we are really um, involved on a human uh, development of in technological way. So we really think about uh, the technology that has been developed by human for humans. Uh, I'm an industrial designer. I've been uh, specialized on uh, digital manufacturing, uh, synthetic biology, and also technology applied to fashion. I'm founder of um, Soy, that is this company that is bringing uh, uh, academics and also industry and uh, the say the society, you know, we're in that field. Uh, I'm professor also uh, in academy distributed uh, university that are, is based on fab labs and uh, some programs that we are uh, sharing uh, of, of, to the world. And also I'm coordinating fab lab network uh, in Equal. Um, just I'm, I'm really curious about how uh, big are things and that stuff. So, um, as you can see, uh, Italy is almost the, in the same size uh, as Ecuador. No? Uh, Ecuador uh, has um, uh, 
20, um, uh, 20 less income uh, as PIP in uh, than Italy, and also Italy has uh, twice uh, more people than Ecuador. Just to um, be empathize, to empathize a little bit what we are in, in how the magnitudes are. So um, we are uh, involved on industry uh, organizations and also with academic. Uh, we are a research center located in, um, in Quito. Um, this is uh, like the Central Park of Quito. <laughs> we are just uh, here. And we are really involved also um, in connected with Latin America and um, Ecuador network. Uh, I want to share with you just a few projects that we have been developing in these 10 years. Uh, one is LAT Pavilion. The LAT Pavilion has been a, a pavilion made uh, by the global and also uh, Latin American network. Uh, the purpose of this uh, pro project was how to integrate Latin America in just one project uh, with uh, digital manufacturing and distributed manufacturing. So uh, we started to make an identity where the people uh, use uh, local um, symbols in, 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 this, in this kind of identity that were before the conquest of, of like many years ago. And we started also connected, uh, connecting uh, some countries. We have been connecting uh, 15 countries in, in, in Latin America. Uh, the spots, the yellow spots are the labs where we're located. And then uh, we de developed in the pavilion. It, it was just a, like, you know, like a project to integrate. It, it, it was not the project, uh, the purpose was not the project. It was just a pretext to, 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 to share it. So this is uh, one module. We did a, a structure, su super light structure um, with all the labs. Uh, using a parametric technology and also digital manufacturing. As you might know, uh, the previous uh, manufacturing uh, methods uh, before uh, industrial manufacturing, uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, industrial revolution, were uh, really distributed. So uh, you have the first, second, and third, now the fourth uh, digital manufacturing um, and industrial the, the, uh, revolution developed. And you see that, you can see that uh, in the previous revolution, we had uh, these uh, distributed manufacturing. Now we are also talking about uh, distributed manufacturing. Now with the um, robots and also with uh, different technologies. Um, I have just a quick video here I want to share. Uh, in this project, we have been uh, discussing about how uh, to connect Latin America in just uh, one uh, network uh, and how these uh, fab labs in, 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 in machines can connect from each other to uh, produce a single product. So as you can see, we were uh, working also in the place. Uh, this was in the context of Fab, Global Fab Lab event. Uh, we were first uh, working on each country, each lab, uh, producing this pavilion. And then we um, travel, we uh, literally uh, take these models in a luggage, uh, like ten, 10 of these, <laughs> and uh, put in the luggage and go to um, the event and assemble it. In this uh, exercise, we really um, understand the principles about 
how to do and apply digital manufacturing, including the, the variables that are, for example, the thickness of material. The material in Brazil is not the same as the material in Ecuador, in the material in, uh, in, in other countries. And the machines were different also. So this was more, more an exercise to apply a methodology. And then we were in, in making a workshop in this event to uh, show the people how to design this kind of uh, structures, uh, super light structures and uh, super uh, efficient. Uh, but the, the, the main goal here was this um, exercise, no? And in the context of uh, COVID-19, uh, this was really, really helpful for the network, for the Latin American network and also uh, Ecuadorian network. Um, we have been applying same, same principles that we learned from this experience in order to respond to COVID. Um, we create this hacking COVID-19 easy uh, movement that uh, was uh, 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 to, like fronting, we were fronting the pandemic instead of uh, uh, like saving just uh, everything, no? And, and blocking everything. So uh, the supply was super important uh, and the borders were, were closed. So as a research lab that we are, we were, we were like uh, seeing how many materials, in, in this case, uh, printing material no? for 3D printers and, and that kind of materials were in Ecuador in that point in order to see if we were able as a community to supply the um, medical sector without being stuck out. That was the, the most important thing. Uh, if you print some of them and you can cover all the demand is not, uh, is not possible. No? So um, we uh, understand that we have enough material to uh, print a month in Ecuador in order to uh, make this response. In this uh, part of the program, we really uh, know uh, or meet some people, a really important uh, strategy and uh, also, um, as you can see, production uh, was Material Arcos, uh, Carolina Torres was logistics, I was in coordination. And also we were working not just with uh, our um, network, we were also working with other network around medical area that uh, was an association about these, um, these uh, students of medicine that are uh, crossing the grade and they are doing the, their post grade. So uh, in this part, they were also fighting uh, or, or um, aiming for uh, some um, situations that we, they were. They were um, working in a hospital, paying their um, studies, and also, um, and also helping the hospitals, but they didn't have an income you know, and they were facing the pandemic. So also uh, Henry Saltos uh, was our data expert that uh, helped us to uh, really understand the situation. So we started uh, to call the makers and uh, we called approximately uh, 400 makers in Ecuador. Uh, and we also uh, knew the location of these makers. This was super, super uh, helpful because also the hospitals were just few uh, facing this pandemic. So uh, our effort needed to be really, uh, really, um, uh, really efficient to um, uh, avoid uh, medical uh, stuff being um, 
being a, a, you know, like a, a facing and having problems with this pandemic. Also, in this context, we were um, putting some places in like a maker centers that were helping uh, to uh, guide the materials needed and also guide the um, have machines in order to assemble uh, the products. We were seeing uh, different products um, that we were able to do, but the most efficient product that we um, understand was this face shield supply, no? At the beginning, we were using the, the 3D printing to, you know, uh, 400 people making in their houses and, and producing these um, face shields in 3D printing, mostly most of them at the beginning, that was about uh, 200 units per day. That was not enough to respond uh, efficiently to the uh, pandemic. So we changed a little bit and we started to use laser cutter. Uh, in the, with this technology, we really um, go faster. You know, we were faster with uh, 2,000 units per day. And then uh, we also uh, had some um, support for the army to um, establish uh, some places and open factories in order to respond to this uh, uh, pandemic. So in this uh, phase three and four, we opened factories and um, we were in uh, 9,000 units per day. And finally, we uh, uh, finalized this uh, pro uh, process in one month, in two weeks. Uh, the uh, 4, 000, uh, 40 thousand units that was needed for the first line of COVID. Uh, here are some photos. As you can see, the army was was also uh, helping us. That was really really uh, useful because every everything was closed and they were just the 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 entity that was able to move. In the in Ecuador. So now, what are our results? Um, I, I did this um, these circle circles in order to uh, bring you understanding about the efficiency. Um, we uh, we have a lot of um, different uh, sectors helping us as a public, private, and some uh, organizations. And we earn about um, $17,000. In, in this case, what we achieved and we impact was a half million of dollars. Uh, in terms of people, the, 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 all the people were uh, you know, the factory, the um, staff, the um, uh, makers, uh, people uh, involved on uh, distribution and that stuff, that was about uh, 600 people. And these people uh, were able to uh, impact on 1% uh, of population of Ecuador, uh, that is uh, around uh, 200,000 people. Also, as I was uh, mentioning, uh, this uh, super useful uh, network uh, around um, post-grade and medical uh, area um, was facing this, this reality, no? Uh, they were, were not, they, they had an income uh, like six months and they were facing the everything and helping a lot. So indirectly, 
we were helping them also, uh, and they were helping us distributing these um, face shields. And at this moment, uh, we uh, face to um, achieve a law in Ecuador that they already have a payment by law. Um, th this, this is super important. Um, first, we started with the first um, line of um, people involved in this, um, uh, with the virus. And then we, um, we established um, scopes, no? So the national scope also is um, covered. And at this moment, what we are trying to achieve is this uh, industrial sustainability. So um, we were, were um, planning this new project that is called Make for the Progress, no? uh, that is um, around how, how, how we can make um, products that we need in Ecuador because in, um, we import uh, around uh, 16, 16 billion uh, dollars per year in uh, different products. And our, um, our scope is to go and uh, do that kind of project, uh, products that we are importing uh, and uh, give uh, people work and, and also wellness. Um, in this case, for example, the, the public sector here is importing 90% of the products. That is super uh, not uh, efficient, is not, uh, it, it, it has no sense, no? Um, and we have this huge network and this huge um, capability. Uh, what we, we were uh, seeing, uh, we are uh, like really focused on uh, why if we impact just some of the percent of this uh, huge amount. Uh, at this point, we, were, uh, we are uh, scoping on uh, six, uh, seven, sorry, seven million um, of dollars of economy, no? And probably we will achieve this goal with uh, this half million dollars that we, uh, we already have been involved. So we are really um, convinced, uh, uh, we are really, uh, uh, you know, calling uh, uh, certain entities in order to uh, hit, uh, to have a seed capital and also uh, bring all these makers, all these uh, young um, entrepreneurs, a possibility to impact just what we are already spending as country. Um, probably we will need so like uh, three thousand uh, of the population, and we will be. Um, achieving or, or impacting uh, uh, between the fourth and the six percent of population in Europe. That's everything. I uh, thank you, and that are my contacts. Perfect. Thank you so much, Roberto, uh, for your participation and for uh, this interesting intervention on uh, on the role played by the makers in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic in Ecuador, and also this, this model of partnership with the public and private sector that is quite interesting to explore. Um, I take now the chance to encourage again our audience to use the Q&A button and start writing down their questions that we will discuss in the end. And um, let's move on to the next speaker, who is Leonard Mobele, manager of IoT Research Lab at uh, iLab Africa in uh, Strathmore University, Kenya. Uh, it will provide us with an overview of the initiatives undertaken by iLab Africa uh, in the mainstreaming of 3D printing and IoT within the Kenyan private sector. Uh, Leonard, please, the floor is yours. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Aurora, and thank you for the good introduction. Um, it's also an honor to meet an amazing panel at this point in time. Um, so I know the subject of Industry 4.0 has a lengthy conversation. Basically, it's a huge ecosystem that gets so much going on. But from my perspective, I just wanted to share some of the initiative under the whole umbrella of Industry 4.0 particularly uh, you know, as an ecosystem that has the cyber physical systems coming into play and looking at the value of data and, and some of the surrounding technologies like additive manufacturing coming into play. Now, Isle of Africa is a huge entity. Uh, it's, it's a tech, and tech research and innovation center at Strathmore University. And it basically has quite a number of different segments, pretty much more like nine of them, and Internet of Things happens to be one of them. Probably others in a nutshell will be the data science, uh, cybersecurity, and we also have an incubator. But those are details probably are available on our website, and people need to delve in. For this uh, event, I just wanted to share insights on our work, particularly at the IoT. And our work centers on like four pillars, and that includes research on the magic technologies and Industry 4.0. Happens to be one very huge uh, topic at this point in time, not only in Kenya, you know, as, as the biggest economy around Eastern and Central Africa, but because of, of the work that various entrepreneurs, startups, and different uh, categories of, of companies are trying to work on. And then we also focus on industry for collaboration, which I think moves our research, uh, develops the value for our research. Probably someone would say research and innovation for market deployment, and that's where the industry collaboration comes in. And then we are also particularly interested to drive the development of skills. If, if anyone's looking at Industry 4.0, and probably Stefano and, and Alvaro will agree with me in their presentations, you definitely have to have a skilled workforce and a skilled personnel. And we're very keen to ensure that we develop the, the, the set of skills for Industry 4.0. And then at the same time, you're also keen to fix secure the future ta talent. And this is through some of the things that probably tie into some of the presentations that have already been made, and that is through the maker spaces and fab labs. And, and I'm happy to say that Strathmore University just recently launched our maker space. And definitely, I look, I kind of see a lot of collaborations going forward after this panel under that pillar. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so under, under what we look at in terms of IoT as an ecosystem, because IoT definitely has to be broken down in different segments. That is the embedded systems, the connectivity and networks that come with the cloud, the data, the predictive analytics, the algorithms, and some of the things that were on the slide that Roberto just showed earlier on. Uh, we, we, we have some of the pieces that we work with, and this is just an image I picked in the lab of some of the components that we use for some of the embedded research and development work we have. Uh, and that just includes some of the AVR microcontrollers and some other chipsets that are from ARM or another company. Some of them based on the PCBs that we work with. And this is just an image showing some of that. So I hope you hear me well. Um, so, uh, and this also, this now this slide is just a demonstration. Just a little bit of uh, background noise. I don't know if that can be avoided. Okay, let me, let me see what to do with that. Yeah, so uh, Rora, just tell me if the background noise has faded a bit. Uh, is it okay now? Is it better now? Um, yes, seems a bit better. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay. So I'll probably I'll just be quick because I, I, I don't know. I mean, it might have a bit of that uh, where I am right now. Um, so this is just a slide just showing some of the network, what we are doing in terms of the ensuring that we have an eco connected ecosystem where you get the data from the embedded systems and particularly for the industries that we are currently working with and some of the partners that we are working with locally, internationally as well. And we have some a lot of deployments we've done on low power data networks, particularly on Sigfox and Lora One and, and Narrowband IoT. And we have quite a number of things we've just done throughout the COVID-19 era. I mean, uh, it's a whole season from March to around October, we were working with our regulator, pushing for the work on shared spectrum. And we managed to have 
but least some work going on in TV white spaces and currently we are sharing spectrum in 4G band. Uh, the idea behind this is just to ensure that as we push for connectivity for the devices that send data from, from, from the different industrial points, we also have the data being accessed by the users. And that's where this has become a very huge pillar in our, in our engagements with different partners. Uh, and, and some of the best small micro gateways that we have are just put here on the image, ensuring that we have the data coming from whether it's agricultural partners we're working with, whether we were working with healthcare individuals, I mean, or groups, or if we are partnering with the industry. So the ecosystem that captures the networks to transmit the data is, 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 is pretty much driven by low fire data networks and our work on shared spectrum. Next slide, please. Yeah, and this I think this is a very interesting thing, particularly for the first presenter. And we, of course, at the end of the day, we are keen to have additive manufacturing as a pillar, delivering the services that come with it, but also at the same time ensuring we have a skilled, you know, that I, that I mentioned, skilled individuals in terms of doing the additive manufacturing. And part of the printers we do have, some of them are locally assembled here, locally packaged from some of the you know, uh, uh, renewable devices or even some of the thrown away e-west. So we use that to assemble the uh, build the 3D printers, but we are also keen on, on collaborations with other partners that we're working with, including Ultimec and Megaboards uh, to be able to have the, uh, the, the use of the 3D printers as a packaging element for IoT, but at the same time as an, an, an ecosystem that builds knowledge towards that direction of additional manufacturing. Yeah, so these are just going to maybe rush through some of the case projects that we have. So at this point in time, we have an, a H2020 collaborative project, like for partners in the EU and like five countries in the EU. And basically it's, it's just focused towards agriculture. So what we've done is we've deployed over 50 devices with, with, with a little NP1 network in one of the places here, if you can see my slide, it's called Narok. Uh, it's pretty much towards the, the, the lake side of the country. Um, so what we're doing is just collecting data with the data and correlating data with satellite data and trying to build algorithms around it that is valuable for our Kenya Meteorological Department uh, as well as farmers because at the end of the day it makes sense towards the farming ecosystem. So this is one of those projects, we, we call it TWIGA, if, uh, it's a short form for the transforming weather water data into value-added information services for sustainable work. Oh, this is another one. So this is another case project we've done together with the UN Habitat. And I'm happy this, this, this whole event is being driven by UNIDO. Um, and, and it's entirely focusing on low-income urban sanitation. So we've deployed devices on, on Sigfox network to be able to tell the sludge levels and just ties into another project of trying to get the water levels as well. And what we have is de devices that have, have been set up with the set different sensors and these sensors just collect all that data up and push through the SIGFOS network to our cloud. And we are doing a lot of analysis on it. So this is a very interesting second project that we've partnered locally with uh, an, I, an internet service provider, which is uh, Liquid Telecom that is working together with a French company, of course SIGFOS is a French company. And, and for us, we are involved in trying to develop the ecosystem, ensuring we're kind of coming back to what would be the value of, the, of understanding the different urban, urban settlements and low-income urban settlements in terms of sludge levels and water levels. Yeah, this is another third one. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm rushing through these projects because I mean, they're pretty technical and so far I've seen the panel leader to have a bit of much of the higher level conversations, which I'll be happy to take on questions later on, maybe I mean, around the, the, the funding, the business cases at this point or whatever sustainable plans we have. So that's a conversation you can have on the other end, but just rushing through these case projects. So this is one, it's called disaster prediction management. And again, we are as a believer of collaborative industry 4.0. I'm not sure if someone has published anything on collaborative industry 4.0, but our focus on collaborative industry 4.0 is just engaging different partners on the, on the pressing problems. And for this one is a pressing problem of flooding and drought. And we are happy to be working with four, three other universities in the country uh, together with some other disaster response units within the government and be able to amass data uh, from different points and have that data pushed over getting the, level, the, the information of uh, impending on impending flood or an impending drought. And this is a very interesting project from our perspective because uh, at the end of the day, under climate change, and which I think Roberto alluded, alluded to it too, uh, 
it's a hot topic over here. Seasons have changed. I mean, I was in Europe, that places still know is not coming anymore. And so we are looking at it from a point of how do we understand, how do we tell a, an impending flood? How do we tell an impending drought? And this is actually affecting pretty much the more like 50 percent of the country, especially when the rainfall patterns change and when the drought patterns change or the sunshine patterns change. Yeah, so here again is just a slide coming up, tying out to, onto my first slide in terms of the work we do in ensuring we are building enough capacity and looking at the scaling digital skills for the industry 4.0. So we've been working with Motorola for quite some time now on, on trying to push work for industry 4.0. And so far we've been able to run various workshops within the capital that is Nairobi where Strathmore University is based. And we've also been doing this now. This year we did this just under COVID-19. We were doing this uh, like 450 kilometers away from the capital and just ensuring that we have every, the good understanding the students need on embedded systems, on connectivity, especially the emerging technologies on connectivity and the data, additive manufacturing, and what we are looking at as value returns through data analytics. And this is a, a project that I think it's going to be running for quite some time. Uh, of course, working still with Motorola. And on the other hand, we also have the work moving on still on Horizon 2020. Uh, so at this point in time, just looking at where we can bring up more entrepreneurs to develop work, on, I mean, to develop solutions for Industry 4.0, capturing the different segments or the different verticals of the market. Um, so we have quite a number of them looking at agri-tech, a number of them in the healthcare space, a number of them in, in the industrial manufacturing space, and we have quite a number of just coming up in the environment and in smart homes and things and air quality work. So this is a project that is running again until 2022, and ideally we get to have the whole stack of internet of things as a block being delivered to the entrepreneurs to understand how to set up the uh, their business models and, and how they will build up the technology itself as well. So from our research lab, we've been able to deploy solutions to different industries. And at the same time, we need to think about some of the ideas that entrepreneurs are having to drive their business cases. And we are partnering with uh, different uh, uh, entities in, in, the, in the continent and of course other continents to be able to have the entrepreneur skill for that. Of course, you're still also working with Cisco, uh, particularly just looking at how we get to have a more focused uh, approach of implementing IoT, particularly from a connectivity standpoint. And this is also a very great pillar for us in terms of building capacity for industry 4.0. Yeah, thank you. So I, this is just an overview picture of Nairobi for those who have never seen it. But the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take questions that align towards the things that are presented. We have pretty much quite a number of other projects that are ongoing. And I'm happy to engage further uh, with the different panelists over here and some of the outputs you might get from, from the presenters attending the, the, this event. Uh, but bottom line, we are keen on ensuring that the adoption of Industry 4.0 aligns precisely with the needs within the market. But then again, we leapfrog the adoption of the technology to drive the business value, particularly in places that we've not been able to develop a data-driven ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leonard, then for accompanying us on this journey of the work of iLab Africa to mainstream industry 4.0 technologies in Kenya and uh, this multi-stakeholder partnership approach with different entities that was extremely interesting. And let's move on to the next uh, speakers. Uh, I am now delighted to leave the floor to Mr. Raymond Tavares, Industrial Development Officer at UNIDO, and to Professor Wu Yugang, Director of the SII MPC, to provide us with an overview of UNIDO's efforts in the digital transformation sector, with a focus on the organization's experience in China. Mr. Tavares, Professor Yugang, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Aurora. Good morning, good afternoon, because some of our colleagues I know and I see that they were collected from uh, Central America. And uh, I would like to congratulate you to commend the ITPO for the great work you're doing. And I would like to thank my colleague, uh, Dr. Yu Gang, who has been also from China, it's almost maybe 10 p.m., waiting uh, to take the floor. So we'll be very quick to give you the floor, Doctor. 
and he is the director of our center. Uh, I have created with one of the projects that we are doing as UNIDO uh, International Organization in order to foster innovation and to help countries to go smoothly into the digital transition. Uh, let me uh, start saying UNIDO is the Apex UN organization dealing with industry. And obviously, uh, my colleague uh, uh, Diana, for sure, the head of the, the organization who is at the center of this organization, I commend the effort and what you're doing is a great job you're doing, and uh, has and will have the occasion to explain what really UNIDO is doing in order to take all the countries to be part of this industrial, new industrial revolution. So being the apex UN organization agency dealing with industry, for sure, we may have not been left out of the process of digital development. And somebody called it even the industrial 4.0. So other people would not do it and without you need no involvement. What you need would like to do, obviously, because during all the existence of Euro, we have been dealing with what is key regarding industry, manufacturing. And first, the discussion was about the productivity, productive. After that, about the maintenance or simultaneously maintenance. It was inclusiveness later on. It was green, circular, and now it is digital. But the digital should have all what we talked about before. We should, with the digital, be able to be inclusive, to be green, to create prosperity, to offer decent jobs, and to be productive. And this is what we are talking about, and we are talking about using the new technologies. So what UNIDO is doing in that case, in order to foster the use of new technologies, or the inclusive industry 4.0 for everybody. We would like first, and we are working towards that, that the global value chain remain. Here we heard sometimes about people saying backshoring. It is important. We need to have this global value chain shorter. And sometimes like Roberto Gallo was saying, we need to be autonomous talking about strategic goods regarding health during this pandemic. But at the same time, UNIDO will continue promoting sustainable global value chain using even the new technologies. And so it's going also to say that we need partnership to do that. And this is what we try to do in China with one of our project Global Innovation Network and I just mentioned another name, which is key for UNIDO, innovation. Building the blocks for everybody to tap into this new industrial revolution. Innovation should be a culture. Innovation should be a reality. Innovation should be a capability for all our members. And we need to bridge the innovation centers. We did it also because myself, I was interested in the area science part when the International Center for Science and High Technology of UNIDO was set up there, or now the ICGB was also established by UNIDO, or the WITRO, World Association of Industrial Technology Research Organization, created 50 years ago by UNIDO. So we would like to accompany research centers, institutions dealing with research and technology promotion to be sustainable, but to exchange the effort. So we create skills and we share the skills. Prosperity will be always there and sustainability. I just list some of the aspects of our future or current focus as you need to. Uh, if you allow me, I would like to share very quickly because I think, uh, 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 Dr. Yugan will talk about one of the projects we have in China, which is the MT Intelligent Manufacturing Technologies. So here I would like to start with this slide. Industry 4.0 will transform and growth manufacturing sectors globally. And with the figure you can see, it is not what we said. It is somebody else who has done the assessment. 
actually we talk about the digital development and the digitalization. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Tavares, maybe uh, the, um, the step of the share screen, just so that we can also see the slide. I was talking to myself because I have not shared my screen. This was the main problem. You may get it now. Is it the, okay? The intervention. Um, yes, right now. It's starting perfect now. Yeah, now because I was talking to myself that saying, yeah, okay, this but, but one. <laughs> the intervention was very engaging all the same. <laughs> Excellent. This was the figure I was just taking, saying that this is a figure from McKinsey, and it was three years ago. But the idea was just to say, hey, guys, what is happening? Everybody could have his own share, but we all need to be there. So it means we are reinventing what we have been doing so far before, but in a different platform. And as the international and UN agency, we would like everybody to take advantage of this one because this is the humanity which will benefit from this. So I was just saying, and you may all know that the world was facing all these challenges. If we talk about now with the new technology, there is the risk of backshoring instead of what we are doing before, you know, offshoring. And we got from our member states sometimes saying, hey guys, those from the developing part of the world saying, how can we be part of this global value chain? And we had also the tensions. I'm not going to nominate the tension where they are coming from, but we have that as a challenge. Everybody would like at least to be there, to have his own share or part of the sun. Migrations, we have the climate change and we can add now the COVID-19, but we don't have to um, just forget the fact that what is, pushing all of us are the sustainable development goals for the 2030. You have it in this part of the presentation where you have obviously the 17 sustainable development goals. So we all need to go towards that and to do it, what UNIDO is doing, UNIDO has different role. Obviously UNIDO has here, it's the manufacturing, the industry 4.0. If manufacturing has been core to what we are doing, now we talk about the smart manufacturing, we connect with all the rest of our life, of our activities, of what can impact this manufacturing. Unido is doing it, use obviously focusing mainly on its advisory role, policies, regulations, and institutions capacity building. UNIDO is doing it also, making available some assessment tools. We have been producing an assessment tool helping countries to understand if their innovation basis is sustainable, can help them to quick start some digital solutions. We do a national system of innovation assessment. How vary the fluidity of discussion of connection between at least let's call them the four main actors, the government, the industrialists, we can call it so the universities and the fourth, I'm just the triple helix, we add one more is the banking system and the financial system. We call them the arbitrageurs. But it is a technical tool that you can have access, you can ask for that one. We have been developing other things also in the role of what we call UNIDO normative function for compliance or standard setting. So UNIDO in that case with the new technologies is monitoring, is helping also to get standards, new standards regarding the new technologies in order to protect the planet and the people and to safeguard the health of the consumers. UNIDO has another function as normally what we call technical cooperation. And for doing that, we foster, we assist countries to get the right infrastructure. So it is like an infrastructure setter. UNIDO help also the skills development in the new technologies areas. 
and you need to facilitate technology transfer. This is also what my colleague Diana Bataja knows very well how to do it. Because her office or the network within which she's part, the network of ITPOs, they are doing very good job of transferring technologies and the new technologies and facilitating the access of new technologies. And this is part of the third like function of UNIDO. First, I said advisory, I said normative, I said technical cooperation, and we can add even another one, which is the convener for global fora. And this is to foster partnership. People need to meet, to partner, to discuss about challenging, uh, the challenges, but also to find the solutions and to make the solutions available for everybody inclusive. So well, global partnership and UNIDO is a global conveyor also to advance the agenda of the development of the humanity. Here you have also what I just mentioned, the details you can access. And obviously the project we are doing around the world and China, what we are doing in China in boosting the fourth industrial revolution, the innovation as a building block of the digital world is very key. And today we would like to share it with you. And it is more what my director is going to share. We talk about transferring technologies, preparing small and medium sized enterprises to accept and to adhere to the new industrial revolution and to run with the new technologies. So I give the floor to uh, Dr. Yugang uh, to share one of our experience in China. And I thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Lemong. And uh, uh, thank you, moderate. And uh, also thank you, Nido ITPO uh, Italia, and they give me the chance to uh, introduce uh, uh, the UNIDO IMT project in China. Yeah, I will, uh, I will yeah, share my screen or? Mm, yes, if, if you are able to share your screen, otherwise we can find another solution and share it. Yeah, I can share my uh, screen, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Doctor, if you find some challenges, I can share mine because I think the second part yeah. is your presentation. Okay. I I do or you're going to do? Oh, I think you. Uh... I can share, but I think you, uh, I will try to again. Yeah. So uh, maybe I have some problem. I cannot. Uh, okay. Uh, let, let, let me let me share mine for you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let me, in that case, stop sharing okay. and use, use the second one. Okay. I think this is the one you need to. Okay, yeah. The second part. Is it okay? We can see it from here. Perfect. Uh, doc doctor, is it okay? Yeah, I, I can go to the next one. Yeah, yeah, this is the first part, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, this. So, yeah, thank you, Dr. Limon. Yeah. Yeah, next. Uh, yeah, this is the contents we will introduce now. And uh, the first part is introduce the IMT project. And, uh, you know, the mission of the needle is uh, it's promotes uh, and accelerate in the uh, industry and sustainable industry development in member states. As you know, uh, on 1st January uh, 2016, and the UNSDG and 17 goals uh, came, into, uh, uh, came into force. UNIDO's model is fully uh, recognized the SDG 9, which calls build uh, resilient infrastructure, uh, promote uh, inclusive and sustainable industry and uh, uh, food innovations. And uh, <coughs> the UNIDO project, the intelligent effect technology and that's uh, application in a small and medium-sized enterprise was signed on April 20, 2018, under the background of the UNSDGs, in order to specify, specifically promoting the upgrade of SMEs, manufacturing uh, industries in developing countries, and enhance the application abil ability uh, on intelligent metric technology of SMEs. Yeah. yeah, next, please. Yeah. And uh, yeah, next page, please. Yeah. The next one is okay. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, at the same time, the Shanghai International Intelligent Manufacturing Promotion Center. Uh, uh, and you need a project office. Yeah, uh, previous please. Uh, was uh, inaugurated by the Director General of UNIDO, Mr. Li Yong, and uh, the former Minister of uh, Minister of Ministry of Industry and uh, in, uh, Information Technology uh, together at the uh, uh, 2018 UNIDO Global uh, CEO development conference. And uh, uh, in order to uh, implementing the project, uh, uh, at first, uh, the expert tank, I mean, the experts uh, committee uh, was uh, established. The expert uh, committee consisted of the two, uh, 26 experts from the private sector, academia, uh, dormitory, and internationally. And we have the two expert committee. One uh, is in the uh, 2019, and uh, this year we have the second uh, expert uh, <coughs> committee meetings. And uh, uh, the content of the second meeting is about the COVID 19 crisis management, the impact of intelligent effect chain SMEs and uh, counter measures. Yeah, next please. Yeah, uh, Dr. Limon, next please. Can you see my, my slide? Because I'm in the next. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, we have organized uh, some the activities and the uh, uh, forums and the workshops, and uh, and this achievement is uh, finished by the uh, our project team, both in the UNIDO headquarters and the, or the uh, local teams in Shanghai, and. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, we have organized uh, uh, from the 2019 and the, 
2020. And uh, this is the list or, uh, we organized. Yeah, next please. Yeah. And uh, uh, oh, uh, yes, yeah. Um, can can I go to the next? Um, yeah, I think uh, 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 before uh, previous page. Yeah, please. Yeah. Previous again. Yeah. I, I, I think definitely uh, you are not seeing my screen because I was just mentioning the uh, the training we are uh, doing the workshop. Uh, maybe you can try okay, to share. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, this is the. Uh, so I think the it's it's an extra piece and. Uh, Next piece. Uh, so I, I think wait. Uh, I, I there are some problems, uh, the technical problems, and uh, okay. I, I will uh, just uh, introduce. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, this is the conference we organized this year, and uh, this year, uh, because uh, of the COVID-19, uh, there are some the uh, activities is both uh, we organize is online and offline, and uh, this is really the big event uh, we uh, organized and uh, uh, organized the, the, this year and uh, in the later part uh, of the second half year. And it's about the advanced manufacturing conference and the high quality development forums and uh, the A, the A, the general conference. Uh, because the, uh, as you know, because of the COVID-19 and the, the big events or big activities in China is should the past the evalu evaluation and uh, it's worse. So, uh, Fortunately, because the importance of our, of our conference and uh, we can successfully hold this, the com two conferences, the online and the offline. Yeah, next please. Yeah. And Mr. Yu Gang, if possible, we would kindly ask to conclude in uh, one or two minutes, just so that we yeah, can- Yeah, okay, yeah. Attention. Also, we have uh, uh, organized some the, uh, activities and uh, about the cap uh, capacity building, the, about the IMT trainings, and the way focus on the two main areas is one is the digital design and the, uh, simulations, and the way uh, and the second part, uh, the second is the three D printing. Uh, the tentative uh, will start the from the next uh, years. Yeah, next page. Yeah. And uh, the series uh, public lecture uh, we have organized is the uh, two parts. One is the lecture is uh, about the digital design simulation and our textbook digital design and simulation in intelligent manufacturing has been compiled and uh, uploaded at, to the UNIDO Knowledge Hub. And the language is the Chinese, English, and the French. And uh, the French language, the version is just uh, translated. And uh, uh, the publication is currently being used uh, for the digital design and simulation training as the basic reading material for trainees. And also is the fun foundation of the training course, uh, structs and uh, uh, course developments. And the right part is outline 
there are the uh, 14 chapters. So we organized the uh, uh, 14 uh, public lectures about the, uh, this topic. And for the area two is the 3D printing. Yeah. Yeah, next please. Yeah. And the 3D printing is the technical design engineering for the technical design engineering and uh, the manager staff within the manufacturing SME in the less development underdeveloped regions and the vocational and the technical colleges. Yeah, this, uh, this is the, uh, we designed for the design, uh, digital design and the simulation. And uh, this public is already, uh, we have the uh, five uh, lectures already we have passed, yeah. And uh, the objective for this series uh, lectures is help SMEs understanding the importance of the digital design and the simulation in the uh, realization of enterprise intelligent manufacturing, the learning how different enterprises can establish their own digital product design system. Yeah, next please, yeah. And the uh, serial public lecture two is about uh, three printing. And uh, the top the benefits uh, is technical design engineering and the manufacturing staff within manufacturing MES. And we will uh, start from uh, the next year. And this public lecture we will uh, uh, in. Chinese language and uh, together with the English uh, simultaneous uh, interruption. And uh, the right part is the outline. We will design the, uh, the eight uh, lectures. And uh, the, the first uh, four, first part, the four uh, lectures will, the, the main is the serial uh, depart, uh, the part. And uh, the late four, for uh, lectures will focus on the uh, applications. Yeah, yeah that's all, all our, our presentation. And uh, uh, sorry for the technical problem. And uh, uh, and uh, thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor Doctor Wu. Let me just say that you need to, as you can see, it was just uh, one project, but in that project you can see skills development. Policy was not there, but the standards, we are working on the standards in order to build the trust and the confidence of the people on the new technologies. Uh, we can talk about also the infrastructure part of what UNIDO is doing to help countries and the research and development putting uh, uh, all um, actors together. So publications, you can have a publication on innovation in our knowledge hub on innovation standards, how at least you set the base and what you can do for that one. You have on quality matters, you have on investment also, and you can have like what my colleagues just mentioned on digital design. You can visit the UNITO website, you will find much more other tools helping you to make this kind of transition to the development. development. Thank you to the digital development. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for some any technical uh, uh, let's say problems we we face today. Thank you very much to both of you, to Mr. Tavares and to Professor Yudang for the very interesting insights on Unido's efforts to mainstream digital technologies and for emphasizing the role of cooperation in this field. And thank you also to all the panelists for contributing and enriching with your uh, very valuable um, experiences the discussion on digital manufacturing that we had today. And we are now very excited to transition to the interactive session of this event. And we look forward especially to engaging with the audience using a live polling option that uh, you will see displayed on the screen in a few seconds. So you can either um, use the link that has been shared in the chat or alternatively go to the website www.menti.com and type in the code that you can see in the chat, in the Zoom chat. 
So I will give you a few seconds to reach the website. And we will have two questions using this tool. The first one is, what are the first three words that come to your mind in relation to industry 4.0? So please take a moment and enter the words that you deem relevant and we will wait until we get a good handful of answers. After you answer your response, please uh, go back to your Zoom window so that we can check together uh, the results of the poll. So also keep in mind, please, that the size of the words that you're seeing means that uh, it's directly linked to the number of times that that word has been submitted. So we have already a handful of words here. Uh, of course, 3D printing, of course, digitalization, artificial intelligence. Global phenomenon data is a very interesting one. Um, I'm sure that many of the words that we're seeing on our screens will resonate with the audience and especially with, the, with the, our panel of speakers. So let's wait for a few seconds. And according to the size, I'd say that the words that have been typed most of the times uh, have been innovation and digitalization, which of course is perfectly in line with the topics that we have um, addressed today. So thank you very much for taking part in this poll and let's switch to the second question that um, is an interesting one, especially for us, because we would like to get to know more about the composition of today's audience. So we would like to know if you are a startup, an SME, a research center, a fab lab or other. Keep always in mind that after um, selecting the answer, you have to go back to your window, to your Zoom window so that we can comment together the results of the polls. Take your time and don't be shy. We look forward to your contributions in this sense. Okay, so it looks like a large part of you picked uh, the answer other. So we definitely look forward to get to know more about that. And also a large percentage of the audience is composed of research centers, which is very, very interesting. So this allows us to have a more comprehensive views on the topics we are addressing today, also part of from the point of view of the uh, end users. So thank you very much for uh, engaging with us in these live polls. Great. And now let's um, let's go to the uh, Q&A session. And um, we would like to propose to the speakers at this point, um, like a question that um, proposed by Unido ITPU. So in this case, uh, if uh, if it can be displayed in the screen, thank you so much. So what have been uh, the biggest challenges you faced uh, in your experience in digital manufacturing and what strategies and tools did you use to overcome them? Um, I would like then to, to just do a quick round and it can be even like a very short answer, one, two minutes, just highlighting um, the, the unique insights of your experience. So what, what has been like your, your biggest challenge and obstacle that you had to overcome and, and what helped you doing that in uh, mainstreaming digital manufacturing uh, in your experience. Um, so I guess we can start by from Stefano. If you're still there. Yes, I think that the, the biggest challenges that we saw, especially in the companies, is that the, a lot of attention is always put on the technology. So like all of the technologies that we have been talking about are really interesting, but the main uh, challenge, the main issue is like, for what we've seen, the strategy. So it's not, the first step is not to decide if you want to use one or another technology, but actually to think why, why 
you want to change the way you're doing business and which is your real aim as an entrepreneur or a manager. So th this kind of thing that there's a lot of uh, mixed, mixed, mixed attention between like the pure tech and what is actually the driver. Thank you so much, Stefan. Also, the insight of someone that really works with SMEs and is very focused in contextualizing also this kind of innovation. So uh, then next, maybe Roberto Gallo, the biggest challenges and how you're working them in Ecuador. Um, actually, in, in Latin America, in, in Ecuador, in all the world, uh, probably the most uh, difficult part is the materials. Um, you, we, we can uh, put robots in uh, all the, the globe, but what about the material? No? So I think that that is the main challenge, how to uh, manage the materials and also how to uh, use your materials that you have in your location in order to transform them in, in products and also uh, make this cycle no? about uh, uh, circular economy. So, I think that that is the most uh, difficult part. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, what about the African continent, Leonard? Um, what has been the biggest challenge and what did you do to, to overcome that? Yeah, I mean, for us, um, basically it's been funding industrial, uh, say I would call it like industrial cooperation in terms of or commitment, and then the development of the best skills. So uh, for funding, I would say, I mean, that goes without saying that trying to do anything in the industry 4.0 innovation, you definitely require very good base for that. And if you have challenges with that, you definitely are not going to deliver anything that, that fits the best quality. Uh, industrial commitment, I don't know about the other continents, but it's interesting over here. I find industry doesn't need good things, but they don't want to commit to actually, you know, be able to push that adoption. So in a way it becomes, well, at some point you have had the technology that defeats the solid problem that the industry has tabled on the, you know, kind of given out. But then in terms of adopting it, they become a bit slower because pretty much I think there's a bureaucracy in the industry set up. Even if you look at the entire ecosystem of innovation, we'll all agree that industrial IoT has moved slower than consumer IoT. And mm -hmm. I think that's just because of the conversation around it. Um, and then the final one is, to be honest, I think it's, it's a challenge pretty much we face over here. And of course, I felt it when I've been to other places as well, is getting a very good team that would push, just as Stefan has said, would understand the strategy and tie in the best technology model is not, it's not easy in a way that has been a challenge. So the way we've done it over here is uh, just looking at the three problems I've mentioned, the way we've done it, uh, we've partnered with the industries that are forward thinking, uh, both local and international and, and, and partners in other spaces like research and, and academia as well, to be able to push for the funding. And, and that has unlocked now the part of the industrial commitment because in a way, if you have something you've built that fits the problem that the industry has already demonstrated, then you, the industry just takes it for, for you know, moving it into seeing how things work for them. And that also now unlocks the bit of skill set trying to find out, okay, hey, you know what, this is the problem. And even as we build a cooler technology, it actually needs to be the cooler technology that feeds the problem. And, and that in a way has been the way we've worked around it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Leonard. Very interesting also the distinction between consumer IoT development, industrial IoT development, and like as well, the need to contextualize and like this kind of innovations to tackle real problems. Um, we are very sorry, uh, Alessio Lorusso from Robos had to leave us because he was, he had another engagement today. Uh, but, um, but let's conclude the, the, the round. Uh, with Mr. Tavares and Professor Yugang, uh, always about the, the challenges that have been encountered uh, by UNIDO and uh, in implementing projects to, to mainstream uh, uh, digital manufacturing and also the, how it was possible to overcome them. Yeah, thank you very much for, for, for the question. Um, from UNIDO side, when we face and we ask uh, consumers or SMEs uh, we are working with, uh, 
normally the answers we are getting is it's not for me uh, because I'm too small and uh, maybe not uh, very strong to do that or because they don't know the technology, what they can do for them. They think about robots and other things. Uh, when they know a bit more, there is a problem of privacy, the problem of data privacy and uh, let's say, say data security. And so they would like also to be sure on that one and they have some resistance. And uh, further, it's not only SMEs, but it is also the decision makers. It is fear to lose the job because the main purpose is to maintain or to increase the number of jobs, knowing, not knowing that maybe the new technology can also help to build that. This is in one chapter. The second part is from our own assessment and studies, complementary. We have the problem of infrastructure is real. So it means in those realities, those countries, infrastructure need to be done as institutions. They need to be trained and they need to be strong enough. Like to have observatory, they need to understand what we are talking about. And the last part is about also uh, the sufficient and representative role models. They can see and they said these startups, these enterprises really benefit from the new industrial revolution. And so it is like, Yes, we can emulate them. These are our challenges. Perfect, thank you so much, Mr. Tavares. So if this was the last comment, we can, uh, we can move on to the conclusion of the event. Okay, so uh, just to wrap up this very interesting conversation, um, we thank you very much. Thank you to the audience for your participation in Bridging the Gap, Starward Industry 4.0, Focus on Digital Manufacturing. It has been a real pleasure to have you with us. And we are also very, very grateful for the valuable presence of all the speakers that have joined our discussion today. Um, thank you very much for having shared your insights and for having contributed to push the conversation on this very interesting theme of Industry 4.0 during today's discussion. We are also glad to announce that this event is the first of a series of virtual activities as anticipated by our director, Diana Battaglia, uh, all within the scope of the project Innovation Bridge Triassi Dubai 2020. So we are indeed planning to organize additional virtual events in different formats as well uh, to contribute to the build up to Expo Dubai 2021 and create a structure that will accompany the diverse actors working and innovating on the themes of Industry 4.0. Uh, for more details and to get in touch with us, do not hesitate to contact us at atpo.rom at unido.org and to visit our website unido.it where you will also be able to find in the next days the recording of this event and also the PowerPoint presentations of the speakers. Thank you once again. Uh, we all wish you a nice rest of the day and a pleasant conclusion to the year. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you very much for the nice job you're doing on trying to bridge really uh, the divide and to foster and foster digital development. Thank you for the team of ITPO doing that very well. Thank you so much. Thanks to all. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Thank you. Organizing this. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Keep doing, good, doing the good job. <laughs>